Come and join me and spend Valentine's Day with me. Let's start with a wander around York. That's the OG York for my American viewers. And let's pick up some treats for my printmaking session coming up later in the video. Oh, and let's have a wonderful, majestic, five-star Michelin approved restaurant meal. <laughs> I hope you can hear the sarcasticness in my voice there. Um, I'll give you a clue. It's more like ba -dum bum bum bum
So now that I've taken you on a little wander around York um, this morning and had a slap up five star Michelin meal, <laughs> um, let's see what goodies I brought back, shall we? First up, as you saw, we went to the Yorkshire Soap Company and Lush. So, first up, what I got from Lush because I very much intend to have a bath when I finish printmaking. I've got a love potion. It always is ma amazes me how people get the soaps to look the way that they do. Oh, this smells absolutely delicious as well. Now, I don't know about anybody else, but I can't actually stand the smell of Lush. The shop itself, it's like, it's too overpowering, it's too much. But individual items, love it. Um, I also got a Love Burger from Lush as well. Now, obviously, I'm not going to use all of these today. Um, I'll use them throughout the week. Possibly even a bit longer as well. But look how nice this just opens up. It's like a little puzzle. <gasps> and then the final part as well. Then it's actually wrapped like a little burger. How amazing is that? That's quite cool. I love it when they really think about the packaging and that kind of thing. So this is an array of things. Oh, look at that. So on the bottom, Love Heart Burger Bun, it says Lush, and then on the top it says Fancy a Bath. Of course I do, always want a bath. But look at that, it even looks like lettuce, tomato. Well, that actually looks like a tomato. They've shaped it like that, lettuce, and then some sort of bun at the bottom. Um, so the buns, the pink two buns are bath bombs, and then the others are bubble bars. So yeah, I'll just put it on the screen. And then there as well. So yeah, looking forward to using that. I'll just put that to one side for now. And then I got this cutesy, 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 cutesy bath bomb from the Yorkshire Soap Company. So two items from Lush and then two items from the Yorkshire Soap Company as well. Um, as I said, I'm not going to use all of these today. I'll just use one. <laughs> but these are to last me as well. But look how precious this looks. This little Yorkshire Soap box. It looks tiny compared to, <laughs> to the um, thing. So yeah. Let's open this up and see if the trushel truffles I've got squished oh one second I have a package yeah so just got a parcel perfect timing because it is something that I will be using in the video but I don't need to unbox it it's just a sort of side thing side thing um, I'll explain more about that in a little bit so let's get back into the handmade with love in Yorkshire how do we get into this box Oh, it just slides. <laughs> so, yeah. Handmade bath truffles. Which have all got a little topsy turvy. But look how pretty they are. They are so, so nice. Now, I've never used these before, so. That'll be a new experience, but they smell so rich. But they are very pretty indeed. Let's get one out so I can appreciate it. But look at that, even though they, <laughs> they look like they're in the McDonald's sauce cups. But aside from that, they are so pretty and they smell so good. Oh, quite, um, there's a little bit of citrusness to them, which I'm, I don't mind. 
So yeah, that's it for like the bath sort of items and self-care bits, sort of self-treats. All of this is self-treats really, <laughs> but yeah. So let's just pop all this to one side because I don't want it to get messed up with some other treats. So the next bits that I got were from Marks and Spencers and I got this magazine, Simple Things. I sometimes get it, sometimes I don't. I'm not religious with it, but I just like to have it every so often because they have some beautiful imagery and illustrations as well and some really interesting articles. Um, and just the front of it just looks like Valentine's for me. <laughs> so I'll have a good flick through that while I'm in the bath probably. I don't know if you've ever seen like uh, my autumn wrap up video, but you know that I love their munch, which their munch is basically just chocolate covered pretzels, plain, plain pretzels, little eggs, or sometimes they have gummies or this, that and the other. It's a hodgepodge of all sorts of different little things. Um, chocolate covered popcorn as well. Um, they did this last year for Halloween and I only managed to get one bag, loved it, went back to get more, sold out. Then again at Christmas, they did some Christmas one as well, sold out. But now they've done this little tin, um, which is basically just munch, but it is so Moorish, you cannot get enough of this stuff. Almost dropped it everywhere. So yeah, I absolutely am going to enjoy munching on that. The so next up, can't not have some chocolates. I mean pure chocolates, not just the munch. So let's see what I've got from Hotel Chocolates. See, I've got these raspberry and peach hearts. So let's open these up and put them in my little bowl there. But yeah, look at them. They've even got an S on them look at that isn't that just perfect for studio spirit of course so yeah pop them in my little bowl the other hearts that i got were these amaretto creams because i love 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 amaretto but i'm not a huge See, cherries and chocolate for me is the thing that I always look for. Or oh, amaretto. Oh, I can smell the alcohol already. Let's just have a little nibble of one of these because I'm so excited. Have to have one. I have to show you what it looks like first. So they look, kind of remind me of Care Bears tummies, if anybody remembers the Care Bears. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, these are good. Mm. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm. Very nice. Now, I'm not a huge alcoholic person, but those aren't very strong in terms of the alcohol. You get more of the taste of the chocolate and the amaretto than you do with the actual alcohol, which is good, because that's what I was worried about with those. Um... But they are really nice. It's making me want another one, but no, no, no. Um, I also got these Hotel Chocolate Love Potions. Now, these are pistachio. Oh, I like you cherry much, which I'm hoping I'm going to really like those, because as I said, I love my cherries. Hello, honey, and you're very special. So let's open these up. Oh, let's try a cherry one. Has to try a cherry. Mmm. 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 It's delicious. So, yeah. It's like fondant in the middle rather than chocolate. which I think is so much better. Mm. And then, that's not it for the treats. I'm not gonna eat all of this, I swear. I mainly got it for like props and decoration and obviously so I have a little nibble while I'm print making. So I think I may have gone overboard, but I will be sharing them with people. So first up, 
we got some heart shaped bitty, uh, biscuits from Betty's. How they've not managed to get broke, I don't know because I did actually drop the Betty's bag. Um, so Lord knows what they look like. Yeah, let's just get these open. And then in here, we've got the famous French Fancies, which I love anyway. Oh, just look at those beauties. Just look at those. They're so heavy as well, so you know that they're like... See, the thing is with Betty's, I always find that their food is like what your grandma would have cooked. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that because it they taste absolutely delicious. Let's see it to help Put the rest of the way. But do you know what I mean? It's so Moorish and homemade and just I always get that sense with Betty's, whereas a lot of other places you can tell that they've been freeze dried and this, that and the other. But with Betty's you never really get that impression. So yeah, <laughs> that's a lot of treats. <laughs> so many treats. Um, but yeah, that is it that I got. So many treats. I swear I'm not gonna eat all of these. I'll probably eat like one French fancy and like another chocolate or two while I'm lino cutting. So many chocolates. <laughs> so many chocolates. Mm, kind of feel like there's something missing. I know there's a lot there, but what's missing? I've got stuff for bath, chocolates, had my five star meal, and what was. Ah. Oh, yes. Now, how can I forget flowers? So silly of me. Some beautiful pink roses. I'll tell you why I've I've picked pink instead of red roses, and that is to do with the lino print that we we are actually now gonna get on with doing. <laughs> now that I'm all set up and feeling all Valentine'sy, let's settle down and start making a lino print. Unfortunately, the <laughs> I didn't realise I wasn't recording then. So you've missed what I've done, but basically I drew pre-drew the design beforehand, otherwise we'd be here all day, literally. Um, it does take me a long time to sort of work out exactly what it is that I wanted to produce. So then what I've done is I flipped the image and then um, scribbled the back of the image with um, a 6B pencil as much as possible, then laid the image on the top sellotaped it in place and then drew over it with a ballpoint pen so then we're left with this graphite line drawing um, now I'm going to go over this with just some permanent markers because A there's some more detail I want to add to it and if you just leave it as graphite um, it smudges as you're cutting into it so I'm just going to go over it with um, permanent markers and then I'm going to start cutting into it. Okay, before I get into putting the permanent marker on, which <laughs> just me messing around there, I've already smudged it. So as you can tell, me going over with my hands and carving away is really going to mess up the thing so before I do that I want to show you what I got in my parcel it was just delivered and I have bought myself <laughs> a little hi-fi system um the reason why I've bought myself a little hardware hi-fi system 
they called Sony one. It was only second hand off um, eBay and it was 29 quid. Um, it's a really solid unit. It's quite heavy as well. You can take these speakers off entirely. Let me see if I can show you. Like so. And then the wire is really long so you can put them wherever you need them to be. So that's really nifty. But the reason why I got this unit is because it has a cassette player as well as a CD player. Because I've recently found some old cassette tapes that are mine from when I was a teenager. We had CDs back then. The CDs were all the latest thing, but I couldn't afford CDs. So I was still very much on cassettes. Um, and I've also got a cassette from somebody that somebody made me. And i um, not going to play it because it might embarrass her. But yeah, it was... It was really nice to hear her voice again and then also the songs that she's picked for me um so that was <laughs> really a shock but that was the main drive for getting a, a, a hi-fi system and then the second drive is i want to get back into physical media because a lot of the albums especially some that i'm going to play today like i primarily listen either through youtube or apple music and recently just started to get into spotify um, but there's still a lot of tracks missing from certain albums for various reasons, whether it's because there's not licensing in this, in this country or this, that and the other. And it's just like, but I have the physical CD and I can listen to it, but not on digital because of whatever reason. And there's so many other reasons as to why I, I want to get back into physical media as well as the packaging and the graphics and the you know, in the in sleeves, which is something I, I, I like as well as, as a graphical person. So that's another reason. And yeah, so I thought it was only 20 odd quid from eBay. Why the hell not? Um, I have just tested it. It does work. And the sound to me sounds so nostalgic. And it sounds so much better than any digital speaker system or whatever. So I am very much going down nostalgia route at the moment and really appreciating that. Um, yeah, so the other thing I'm treating myself to for Valentine's Day is I'm going to play a bunch of music. Obviously, I can't play it on the channel because of copyright issues. Um, but I will leave a link in the description below to the playlist that I create on Spotify. Now, again, as I've just said, some of the songs won't be available because of licensing issues. So a few of the tracks will be missing. Um, but everything that I play today while I'm um, carving away and inking away, I will uh, leave in the Spotify playlist when I figure out how to do that, that is. I've not yet done it yet, so I'm not entirely sure, but I know that you can share like playlists with people. So hopefully I'm going to be able to do that. The reason why I'm doing it on Spotify rather than Apple Music is because... Uh, I think Apple Music, you have to have a subscription to them to listen to anybody's playlist. Whereas I think Spotify, you, it's free. So, you, you know, you don't need to uh, be subscribed to Spotify. So that's why I'm doing it with Spotify, whereas I do it with Apple Music, because I know that one. I know how to use that one, but I realise it's not accessible to everybody. Um, but yeah, so the music I'm going to play... <laughs> quite again 90s nostalgia sort of thing is Whitney Houston's The Bodyguard um because who doesn't love Whitney Houston I mean come on um Romeo and Juliet this movie still makes me so bloody emotional and the, even just listening to the music is just like it brings up so much emotion but not necessarily oh lovey dovey emotions I get quite sort of tense and angry especially with scenes with like Tibble and Mercutio so again and I, I didn't realize that there's actually a volume two um so that's new to me obviously the tracks aren't new to me but that's new to me that there was a second album and then of course Buffy the Vampire Slayer the album how can I not have that um I mean I did used to own this the exact same CD and then I gave away all my CDs like I don't know what 10 years ago now and yeah, I'm now starting to get back my CDs. <laughs> so that as well. And then the other one I will be playing. Let me just get rid of these tapes. 
is the Jennifer Lopez This Is Me Then. Now, when I originally had this, um, someone has just bought me this actually on tape, but when I originally had it, I had it on CD, but someone's just bought it me as a gift, as a cassette, because um, we were talking, uh, discussing it because Jennifer Lopez is just about to release This Is Me Now. Um, so it's sort of like the other side of this one, but she's not releasing it until I think the 16th of February. I'm like, couldn't you have done it for Valentine's Day? That would have, you know, I think she's mi missed the trick there, whether or not licensing or whatnot, I don't know. But you know, Jennifer Lopez is all about love and, you know, wanting to be a girl in love and all that sort of thing. And I really like the tracks on this. Again, very nostalgia to early 2000s. So yeah. Yeah, 2002. Wow. <laughs> but yeah, this is over 20 years old now. Oof, oof, oof. Now you know when you're old and you can talk in decades. <laughs> but no, I'm still I'm still young. I still I'm still young. I, look at me trying to convince myself. Um, but yeah, I the tracks that I really love on this are the one version two. Um, Loving you, uh, Jenny from the block. Who cannot love Jenny from the block? Um, Baby, I love you, and I'm gonna be alright. The track, track masters remix version. Um, and still, I like still as well. So yeah, a lot of tracks that I like on there as well. Um, I will be getting the newer album that's out on the 16th. Uh, whether I get it on cassette, if they release it on cassette, they might not do, some people don't. Or whether I get it on CD, or whether I'm kind of toying with the idea of doing vinyl or not. Um, if anybody's into vinyls, um, please leave me a comment below as to whether you think it's worth me getting into vinyls or not. Obviously, I need to buy a whole different system to play said vinyls, but I don't know. I re Again, it's the packaging and the design of, of them that really sort of gets my interest. I don't think I've actually heard a vinyl being played, whether or not it sounds different to a CD or if it sounds different to a tape. I don't know. I'm guessing it does, which is why people love vinyls so much. So please, 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 if anyone knows vinyls and understands vinyls, let me know in the comments below what you think and whether or not I should get into them. So yes, let's get on. The other thing that I like about CDs as well is that you can see them spinning. I don't know, I just find that so, so nice. So let me push this back, get CD playing and get into drawing the lines. So you can see this design hopefully a bit better on camera and then start carving into it. So let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. So what shall we start with? Yeah, Romeo and Juliet. And again, <laughs> another reason why I love CDs, just look at the design on this thing. I know some, some of them are plain, but some of them they're really good to town on them. So again, Another reason why I love CDs. And then also just the sounds of <laughs> little things like that. With all these sweet treats, we need a little bit of a something to wash it down with. Now, most people would have a lovely, what, um, rosé or a wed, wed, wed wine. <laughs> a red wine or maybe some champagne, prosecco, but not me. No, 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 no. I'm still very much, um, I still have the 
taste buds of a child. So for me, <laughs> it is cherry age, basically. <laughs> so it's sparkling though, you know, it's got some bubbles. So yeah, and I do love cherries, absolutely obsessed with cherries. Don't know if I've mentioned that or not in the video. So yeah, just have some bubbles. In a grown up glass, of course, of course. You know, keeping with the theme of the video. Let's rewind the song and start again, shall we? Now, unfortunately, the light is drastically running out for me. I know it doesn't look like it on camera because I've actually turned the um, ISO up, I think, um, which might make it look more grainy. Um, and it'll only last like maybe 10 minutes before it gets even darker. So I'm going to start cutting into this and get some close-ups to show you what I'm doing. Um, and then the majority of this will be cut off camera because I'm just running out of light um, and when I put the main light on um, because it's lino you get the sheen so it's very hard to see where you're cutting you really do need natural light for when you're cutting into lino um, so yeah it, it's <laughs> it's just not gonna look good if I put the big main light on um, so yeah, I'm going to have to cut majority of this off off camera. Um, hopefully I'll be able to get a couple of shots close up so you can see the progress of it. Um, and then we'll have to ink it tomorrow, unfortunately, because literally I'm just running out of daylight. There is literally very few hours of daylight this time of the year in the UK. So yeah, and especially with it being snowing today, it's just being cloudy and overcast all day. Um, well, it wasn't snowing this morning. That's it's bizarre today. It's been wet and dry, then snowing, and now it's going back to just being wet and turning the snow into slush. So yeah, unfortunately, that magical, wonderful fluffiness is not gonna last for the rest of the day. 
So um, you've just seen me pop in a new CD. So I'll be listening to volume two while I'll cut this out. I'm imagining I'll be cutting for a while. So I'll probably get through quite a few CDs actually as well. And obviously some more treats as well. So yeah, let's get on with that before I lose all the daylight. So I'm going to start with the teeny, 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 tiny one. And I'm going to work my way. I'm going to start with the lettering because if I mess up the lettering, I'll either start a whole new lino if I really want the line lettering. I'll make up my mind when I've fucked up. Let's put it that way. <laughs> um, or if not, just completely get rid of the lettering. I'll see, I'll see how I feel in the moment. So yeah. Always cut away from you. And I always put my tip on here because it just helps to stabilise um, the cutting. So yeah, I'm just going to go carefully go around the lettering as best I can and then just chip away at it or should I say carve away at it. But again, you don't need to do too much pressure because this is very soft liner. This is a Japanese liner, by the way, where it's blue on one side and uh, green on the other. And then as you're cutting into it, it goes black. So note to self, when I get some new permanent markers, make sure I get a different colour to black. Might make my life a bit easier. <laughs> Two households, both alike in dignity, in fair Verona, where we lay our scene. From ancient grudge breaks a new mutiny, where civil blood makes civil hands unclean. From forth the fatal loins of these two foes, a pair of star-crossed lovers take their life, whose misadventured piteous overthrows doth with their death bury their parent strife. The fearful passage of their death marks love and the continuance of their parents' rage, which but their children's end naught could remove, is now the two-hour traffic of our state.
Okay, so last night I finished all of the carving. So hopefully you can see quite some tricky bits. But just be patient with it, even though towards the end, as always, I was getting a little patient impatient and make, started making mistakes but I've managed to rectify most of them <laughs> um, but yeah just take your time with prim, um, carving um, just put it on the side camera to see make sure that you're picking up all the details so going forward ideally I would have liked to have printed this on some lovely pink cardstock like baby pink cardstock and then black ink but I don't have any paper cut, uh, pink paper stock, so I'm going to have a little bit of a play with some different papers as well. So I'm going to try with some Fabriano white white, and I do like the idea of this square shape. Um, I'm going to try some proper printmaking paper as well from Strathmore. I'm also going to try some super smooth uh, Bristol paper as well. That's the super smooth one. Then I've got this art form mixed media pad. I'm going to try some of that as well. And then the interesting one is going to be trying this black watercolour paper. Because this black watercolour paper is so textured. So I'm going to see how it takes that. So I'm going to try and do black ink on the white and then pink ink on the black. So I'll see how opaque, how opaque the ink hopefully is going to be. So let's clear some space because I don't want to get ink on everything. So let's move my little hi-fi up there, out of the way, out of any trouble. Yeah. Don't need my cutting tools. Oh, um, you would have seen me as well, hopefully. Um, I just use this really stiff uh, stenciling brush just to push any of the um, bits of flakes out of the holes that they sometimes get trapped in. So just a stiff brush will do really. doesn't have to be a stencil brush. But yes, note to self, I need to get some more permanent markers but in different colours, maybe a blue. Um, but it needs to be different line whips as well for me. So I need to remember to get those. Let's move the nosh. As you can see, I've been noshing a bit. <laughs> so yeah, the flowers can stay. They can stay. So let's set up for some inking. So I like to use the non, the what they call this it's basically non-slip matte stuff you usually buy it for rugs and things but this is one from a diy shop for inside tool chests i think it is but it's it's great and then i just have a glass panel from god knows where <laughs> you just pick up these things sometimes um glass panel inks 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 now the only black I've got in the traditional one is carbon black. So that one's probably good enough. Yeah, that one'll do, I think. I'm also not gonna use a press. Um, today I'm just going to use a Baron, which is just a speedball one. So hopefully it's going to be okay. We shall see. So let's get some black out and get it all rolled up. Oh, I must not have used this one yet. Yeah, why have I not used this? Oh, because I had a little tube of the other one, that's why. Uh, this one. Put quite a 
bit on the palette. Should really <laughs> put the tin towards the thing rather than the other way around. Just a little bit of extender, just to soften it up a little bit because it is quite, I can feel it on the palette now, it's a bit too strong. Too strong, too sticky is what I'm trying to say. I haven't said this, this has got really sticky too. No, it's fine underneath. on there. Okay, and then just give them both a, a good mix. Somewhat happy with that. So let's just pull it out a little bit like that, as usual. I like to do. And then I'm going to use the black roller. I think it's an ST professional one. Um, if anyone wants to know. And then just. Oh, I do love that noise. With that it's thicker on that side and thinner on that side so it shouldn't be as tacky um, hopefully so let's roll it on a line all everywhere I feel like coverage so just to get my test papers going test papers um, just to see if there's any lines missing or anything like that I'm just going to use this fiber castell sketch pad paper a5 size 
just to see if there's anything missing and just line it up a little bit because it's just a bit smaller than A5. That's okay. And then apply a little bit of pressure with the speed ball bearing. So that is looking very patchy indeed. Not enough ink on. But now I know what I can see. But there's some bits that need cutting back just a little bit. So I'm going to take my cheap SD cutter. And just use some of the uh, cheaper ones. Just use some of these just to get rid of any of the um, bits there. Let's re-ink this with some more ink. again just spotted that bit <laughs> so. yep a bit better than that one. And still a little bit of the ink around here. Is that that one or the powerhouse side? Powerhouse side. So all I've done is run it under the tap and then um, wiped it a little bit with a tea towel. And then...
yep wet in it has helped but again we're still getting a little bit too much texture on a nice solid print bag right let's actually try my print making machine and let's make sure that it is not my crazy cutting skills so let me use this i'm going to use this as a mask to put over there so all i'm going to do is just cut around this as close to the design as possible And then so this is just an X cut um, machine for die cutting. Um, I don't think they now sell them. I think they've now gone out out of production. I think I don't even think they're making any more. But um, it's also very useful for printmaking. Okay, so I have Okay, so I've made some adjustments to the cut itself. I've done a test piece as well. It does seem to be much better in terms of um, the carving and getting rid of any little spots and splatters. So let's just give it a good ink. made the mask out of the white on white Fabiano print makes sense to try and use it like so and now I'm going to print on some Strathmore print making paper I just want to make it a little bit tighter go nice crisp print now I know it's not central to the paper but I can always chop the paper down but that's how it should look now originally I said I didn't have any pink paper is on some of the Strathmore paper um, the Strathmore printmaking sheet paper is I have done this effect with just some acrylic gouache so therefore it's not gonna it shouldn't interact with the ink or anything so I just wanted to see what it would look like with the black print over the top because if it looks quite good I'll take a bit more care when doing the background and try and make a series of prints from it rather than just plain pink so let's re-ink this Ink. 
sure there's plenty of ink on it. I've only got one of these pieces of paper. So I don't want to leave any room for error. Okay. So the mask needs to pop on there. Like so. that and then which way do we want this paper to go that way let's go that way let's try and get it a bit more central Hopefully like that put that there and then moment of truth so just put it through one pass. That actually looks quite nice. I know it's not central, I know. But in terms of the colours, it just adds something more to it than it just being plain um, white. Although, having said that, let me know in the comments below which you prefer. Do you prefer it with colour or do you prefer it with white? It'd be interesting to know. So, I think going forward, I'm actually going to do a proper registration plate for the uh, print, um, the lino block. And then it's going to make it easier for me to line up the papers. And then I'm going to mess with these backgrounds a little bit. But the reason why I want a baby pink is because that's traditionally what... Macintosh used was a lot of whites and pinks and then with the masculine bold black crisp lines so that's sort of the effect that I was going for with this print but overall I'm actually very impressed by this this I think this is my most detailed print I've done to date um so I'm getting there <laughs> but yeah so that's it for my valentine's print um, I hope you guys found this enjoyable. As always, please let me know in the comments if you did or not. Um, or if this is something you want me to do differently. Because it, it, whether it's in printmaking or whether it's in uh, just a little Valentine's bits. Let me know because I can always change things up for next year. And perhaps do another one. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and found it useful. As always, let me know in the comments about any thoughts or comments that you may have or any tips or tricks that you may have for me. I'm always happy to keep learning. Yeah, thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.